Well, at this point in our tutorial, what I'd like to do is discuss conditional statements. In other words, creating a condition for Flash to meet. If this is happening, do this. Otherwise, do that. So that's the basis of how if statements are written, conditional statements. Notice what I'm going to do is just create a A for action script layer. And then by selecting that particular frame, I'm going to open up the actions window and let's do a couple of things. Number one, let's create a very simple variable. So I'll say var to formally declare a variable. Um, let's call it um, total. And let's make total a number. We'll strict data type that as a number. Let's give it a value of something like 5. So right now, total is equal to 5. Well, what I'm going to do at this moment is create and set up a conditional statement. So as you can see, what we're trying to do here is to say, if total has a value of 5, we'll do something. So let's see how to write that. First and foremost, we write the simple if. Then with our regular brackets, notice the code hinting. It's telling us um, that we need a condition in here, something to be checked, something that's met. So let's see what we can do. If total is equal to the number 5, close that bracket. Now, let me just close off these curly brackets, as you can see here. In other words, if this condition is being met, do whatever is inside these curly brackets. But before we move on, let's just talk about these equal signs. As you can see, I'm using a double equal sign here. These are logical equality signs. And what you can see in the operators, right? There's uh, operators that you use with arithmetic, as you can see here, very simple ones. Um, but there's also comparison operators. And you should probably get familiar with these if you're going to be working with any kind of conditional logic. But as you can see here, we're testing equality with the double equal sign. What that actually means is when we use one equal sign outside of a conditional statement, we're telling this variable total, we're assigning it a value of 5. But when we're using two equal signs to check a specific condition, what we're actually doing here is testing for equality. Is the variable total actually equal to 5? Not does it have a value of 5. Is it equal to 5? Right? So we're checking to see if this equals that. Well, if we did do that, let's just say we're going to set up a simple trace statement here. And we'll say the first condition was met. Close the brackets. And we'll put a semicolon at the end of that. Let me just close the toolbox for a second. So as you can see here, we, we absolutely know that total does have a value of 5. So what we see here is if total is in fact equal to 5, trace this message. The first condition was met. Control Enter will test our movie for us. And when our output window opens up, we see the first condition was met. Let's continue with this. What if, for example, we had a second condition that we wanted to check to see if it was met. Well, if we continue along these lines, we say else if. In other words, exactly the same thing as the first if. But this is, if that first condition is not being met, check to see if something else is being met. So let's put in our second condition here. And we'll just copy this information, actually. And I'll paste it in here. And let's see. What if, instead of 5, total was equal to 6, and we trace a message that says the second condition was met? So notice it's exactly the same as the first if statement. The only thing we're doing is we included an else to say, well, otherwise, if total is equal to 6, trace the condition was being met. Well, right now, the second condition would not be displayed because total is only equal to 5. But if we were to change the value to 6, let's see what happens here. The second condition is met this time. So you can see how we're checking to see if a specific condition is being met 
and we take actions accordingly. Well, let's say the number was 7. Notice nothing happens. Why? Because we're not checking for that condition. So does that mean for every possibility, every single condition, you have to have some sort of else if in place? Well, not really, because you can always just then say else, or in other words, in layman's terms, we just say otherwise. And what we're going to do in this situation is simply set up the other possibilities. So as you can see, if total equals 5, do this. If total equals 6, do that. Else, otherwise, do this. So we'll just come in here and trace another message. And we'll say, no conditions were met. In this case, the else acts as the otherwise. In other words, if it doesn't equal 5, if it doesn't equal 6, well, just do this. So if we had 7, or for that matter, 7,000, doesn't really matter, we say no conditions were met. So as you can see, unless it's 5, first condition was met, or 6, second condition was met, every other possibility, for example, 8, will say no conditions were met. That's the else, the otherwise. If it's not this, if it's not that, do this. So that's a little bit about conditional statements. And we'll see how to use these conditional statements inside of the previous example that we looked at.